It is Friday, and that means that it is time to enjoy a beer uh, with our good friend Sam Corbet right here, the brewmaster and co-founder of Sada City Brewing Company. And uh, I have to admit, I'm extremely excited about what we are tasting today because everybody's all IPA crazy, as we've been talking about for the last couple of months. You guys have some really unique and interesting IPAs. But before we get to Hazy Pine here, I do want to ask you, Sam, about the creation that you guys have put out this week, I believe actually, as we're talking about this, it's relatively new. Uh, and uh, you told me about it back when I had first contacted you about, Hey, we're doing some stuff with podcasting and Canadian football. And would you like to be a part? And you said, well, we got this thing that's like kind of in the works. That's uh, going to end up being lone wine playing off of the, of course, uh, wordplay of lone pine and hazy pine that we're having today. But what has the reception been? And how excited have you been to share Lone Wine with everybody? Because it's unique and it is fun. Yeah, the online reaction has been pretty good so far. And it's, you know, starting to go off the shelves right now. Um, it's uh, it's our 2000th brew. Uh, Lone Pine has been our flagship, uh, you know, for a number of years now. Basically, as long as we've been here in Gravenhurst. And, uh, you know, we wanted to celebrate our 2000th brew with something special. So we just uh, sort of turned up our the recipe to 11 and... Went back and did an old school American barley wine. Uh, for me, it's like what I remember driving over to Buffalo. We go over to Premier Gourmet and pick up these American beers that at the time seemed so crazy and out there. Uh, these big barley wines were all the rage in the, you know, 15 years ago, 16 years ago. They sort of gone away, but like, you know, when I thought about what we should do to celebrate, you know, our 2000 brew, it, let's talk about our past and things that got us to where we are today. And, it was those original beers. And when I think back, like my, my first thought is uh, we had done a craft beer brewers conference in San Diego and we went to Ale Smith and a couple of the big in stone, some of the big California breweries that were pumping these out 10, 15 years ago. And that's just, that's where I wanted to, that, that trip was so inspiring to me and to end up here and being able to do it 2000 years later, you know, it's a nod to the past. And just sort of that full circle idea of getting back to where you started from. And uh, that's also why we use Lone Pine. You know, it's something familiar, but we wanted to bring something new at the same time. How so nostalgic do you get? Years, how, how nostalgic do you so, get in, in that process? Uh, because it sounds like for you, look, looking backwards makes things that much more special in the brewing game for you. Yeah, well, the older I get, the more nostalgic I get. Everything seems to be in the past these days. Like, and, you know, the pandemic not being able to, it seems like we haven't been able to create a lot of new memories the last two years. So we sort of fill it up with the old stuff, but that's fine. Like, uh, you know, it, it is a bit of an age thing. I think maybe, you know, like kids are getting older. I'm, I'm always looking on my phone at old pictures and then get all weepy. And I'm like, God, damn, I'm so old. <laughs> but uh, this hazy fine, this is a new one. This is new yes. school. So there we'll you go. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, it's funny because, uh, you know, my boy Noah is 11 months old and I'm already looking back at two months uh, like when he was two months old and I'm getting weepy eyed. So I can't even imagine how you feel when you got kids that get older and older and older as it goes, because I don't know if you know this, Sam, but by the nature of law, children continue to age. Yes, they do. And <laughs> I, I, with the first day of school coming up, I know we always have the same stage picture on our front porch every year. And I'm already thinking about I know on that day I'm going to be looking back through it. And this is my daughter's last year at public school. So like, this is like, Oh man, she goes on to high school next year. It's like big changes ahead. So I know I'm going to be swiping on those ones all, all day long <laughs> for two weeks. That's all right. That's exciting stuff. And, uh, and I hope that she is going to have a blast in her grade eight. Grade eight's the best, man. You're the king. You get to walk around flexing on everybody. So uh, <laughs> hopefully she gets to enjoy all of that. Let's uh, let's have a taste here of, uh, of the future, uh, if you will, uh, because we've been talking about the past here. And first thing that I said is, man, I just love the the can design is just gorgeous. Like it, it is, I just like that it's creative yeah, it, and different. It jumped out of the box at me as soon as I picked it up. But um, this is for those that are not familiar, Hazy West Coast IPA. Um, how close in recipe and brewing is this to Lone Pine itself? And tell us about some of the notes of this because it is extremely extremely juicy and uh delicious smelling as soon as you crack the can the two big changes are we uh obviously swapped out the yeast normally we brew this with california ale yeast which is your classic west coast ale 
yeast. It's a machine, but uh, it offers more of a clean profile. We swapped it out for our hazy yeast, which is our London 3, which is a, a, a proprietary yeast up here um, made by the Escarpment Yeast Labs in Guelph, Ontario, uh, which produces more of a hazy beer and really focuses on the on the fruit and the, and the that uh, leaves a little bit more body in the beer. And then we also added some oats to heft up that body as well. Like West Coast are more like are drier and crisper and hazies are a little bit bigger, more uh, full body. So those are the two big changes, but the rest of it's the same, same hops as, as loner, same ABV, just uh, putting a new, a new spin on an old classic. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I like so many of the other things that you've done with Coriolis effect and being able to, to twist those and, and mix them up. How long have you wanted to do something like this? Cause I know you guys have toyed around with lone pine in different incarnations, but it's always fun to try and add a little bit of something different, I'm sure, to a base formula that you're so familiar and that you know people love. Yeah, well, we did it for the first time last year, and it was like, well, I honestly wasn't expecting the reaction that we got from it, and it flew off the shelf. So we knew we had to bring it back. Um, we like doing it. It does offer up a little bit of change from the regular Lone Pine, which for me, I, I've fallen re in love with again. It must be that nostalgia, but uh <laughs> It's nice to have a, a different plan. And Lone Vine has been one that we've played with in the past. We have a, our first black IPA we did was called Pine Tar, which we did a black IPA version of it. We've done, you know, now we've done, we've done a sour IPA version of it. We've done so many different versions of Lone Pine because, and we've done Lone Prime, yep. which was our first version. And now Lone Wine, like, I don't know how many times you can play on that, that same <laughs> thing, but like, it seems like there's always something there to play with. And the, just the wordplay kind of comes hand in hand. Yeah, and the wordplay matches up perfectly with the creativity and imagination of the people that are brewing, right? Which uh, that's the thing that makes it fun. Now, I have to ask because of you know you're talking about the wordplay. Did did Lone One come to fruition because you guys were playing the name game and you're like, should we crank up a crazy high ABV and do something we call Lone One, or was this we want to do something that's Lone? Uh, we want to crank it up. Uh, Oh, Lone Wine. Like, which came first, chicken or the egg on the name and the idea of the brewing? The, the idea came first for the beer. Like, I just wanted to do this barley wine. <clears throat> I didn't have a name. And then I was like, and I, I was like, well, it's pretty similar to just the jacked up Lone Pine. And I'm like, oh, my God, it was just sitting right there. Like, <laughs> if I had a minute, I think I would have been kicking myself forever. I'm like, it's right. It's, it's right there. I remember I came in and Jake was sitting like, dude, I got this. It's right. It's right here. So that, that came. It was actually... The, the beer came first, then the name, even though it was so, so obvious. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. Uh, again, this one is so interesting because for people that are passionate drinkers of, of Lone Pine, which you guys have because it's readily available in the LCBO and it's all over the place and it's in grocery stores across Ontario at different spots. I know that that was actually where I found my first Lone Pine was in a grocery store that a, I think it was a Fortino's in Stony Creek, uh, if I'm not mistaken, that I ended up stumbling into it. And, and, right. was, and for me, it was the can design. Where I went, hell yeah, I like the woods. <laughs> and I grabbed it. And then at the first sip that I had, I was like, I'm in love. Uh, but the idea of being able to to take something like that and carry that forward, creating these different incarnations. Yes, it's rewarding, absolutely. But how far do you think you can stretch? Because we're talking about, you know, oh, the wordplay might run out. But there are so many possibilities with what you guys have at that base. Oh, I mean, I've, I've done many thoughts in my head and loops and spits of what, what we could do but i mean part of it i i will eventually want to get away from it but like i still find it fun to do and the plays on words but we'll see how far it goes i mean right now like i said lone pine seeing a bit of resurgence i think um with the advent of so many hazies people are, are somewhat no pun intended pining for the uh the old school west coast ipas and with fewer of them on the shelf they seem to be uh, you know, turning to Lone Pine a little bit more than they were when there was a whole bunch there. So uh, we don't have any plans on changing Lone Pine anytime soon other than the can that changed last year, just the art. Mm -hmm. We really love that beer. And, uh, you know, now that we, we do it so much that it's just kind of like clockwork now. Like we're brewing it right now as we speak uh, in the fridge. So um, you know, it's, it's a, a weekly tradition almost around here. That's fantastic. Yeah. And I'm sure something that everybody looks forward to. It doesn't really get old when you hit a home run with one like that and you know that it's going to be part of your flagship. But uh, moving forward here, going into September, because this is the end of August for us, Sam, 
what can people look forward to that's coming up, release schedule, things of that nature? I'm not sure if you guys have officially put out anything yet, but just for those that are interested in hitting up sawdustcitybeer.com, putting an order in and getting stuff from the brewery that you can't necessarily get from the LCBO or those grocery stores that I talk about, what's uh, what's on the docket for you? Uh, September, we got a pretty exciting uh, four-pack coming out that'll be hitting the LCBO. Uh, it's an IPA four-pack. It's got loner, it's got magic, but we also got super juicing, which is a 9% of uh, double IPA version of our uh, hometown favorite juicing, uh, Hazy IPA. And then we have uh, a black IPA in the same four pack called Reunion Tour. Uh, and that's a bit of a play on the fact that black IPAs were a hit about 10 years ago and then they sort of <laughs> went away. And just like everything, you know, the band that never went away, they got to they gotta hit that reunion, that reunion Tour circuit and uh, make that, that sweet, sweet money. Like, uh, you know, those bands that seem to have faded but are coming back. So that's why I, that's the play on that one. Uh, we got Viva Puff. Uh, uh, dessert stout coming back again. Uh, we we just we just brewed that the other day for the first time. So look for that in a couple of weeks. Uh, that's all I got right now off the top of my head. But it's still it's a pretty exciting couple of weeks. And of course the lone wine which hit yeah last week. Uh, and then we actually have one that we're we're just packaging right now called Wax On Wax Off, which was a fun experiment we did with uh, the Indie Ale House and Lollaman uh, Yeast. Uh, German Hefeweizen, uh, it's actually going to be going to the Canadian Brewing Awards for a presentation that we did. It's basically what's the difference between open top fermentation and closed top fermentation. Traditionally, German Hefe, Hefe yeast are, are fermented open top to allow the yeast to express itself. But is there a difference in a more uh, in a more contemporary closed top fermentation? So we brewed the same beer and then we're going to have like a, a taste panel and we're getting this done at, at a lab to analyze it to see if there are actually different components uh so it's pretty exciting really sciencey nerdy stuff really brewer deep stuff but uh, it was fun to be able to finally get out and do a collab with a bunch of people we hadn't seen in a long time and really excited about the Canadian Brewing Awards in September and getting into Quebec and uh seeing a lot of my brewing friends that I haven't seen in oh geez it seems like a, a year and a half yeah I, I can't even imagine it feels to me a lot like what I'm going into this weekend when I go to Ottawa for a CFL game you know live BC at Ottawa and it's going to be you know, Tim Baines from the Ottawa Sun that I haven't seen in person since, uh, you know, a year and a half, two years, maybe even the Grey Cup in 2019 might have been the last time that I'd seen him. And one of those people that you, you read his tweets all the time, you talk to him, you text him once in a while for information because he's got his ear to the ground on everything happening in Ottawa football. But it's just different when you see those people again, right? You walk in the same room, you go, wow, we're in the same room. I can't believe it. That's so exciting to be able to do that again, like high fives all around, you know, like and the, and the man hugs and yeah, <laughs> so like I think at this point it's just full out hugs. Like it's like you haven't seen these people in so long, and it's just exciting and also just getting out, like hitting the road and seeing places. Like I'm sure you're like Ottawa is going to be amazing, and I'll add to that the excitement of calling your first game. That's going to be that's got to be an awesome feeling. Yeah, it's a it's a fun one. I feel like my heart rate is already permanently at about 120 beats per minute, and we're still uh, you know a full 24 hours plus out from going into there. But uh, I'll, I'll have the Fitbit on, and if there's a medical emergency, I'll make sure that it alerts me that I'm uh, I'm losing uh, blood from my face or something like that as I go on camera. But it'll be uh, a great weekend, and again, uh, a great brew that you guys have here. Again, it's Hazy Pine uh, West Coast IPA. You can check it out. It is SawdustCityBeer.com. Sam, fantastic day and a great review as well. Thank you so much. Thanks, bud. And hey, just one, if you get any free time in Ottawa, I got to yes. tell you, I'd be remiss not to tell you, you got to hit up Tooth and Nail. Beyond the Pale, Dominion City. There's some great breweries in Ottawa. Uh, when you're there, check them out. I'm sure you'll, uh, if you have any time at all, check them out. You'll, you'll, you'll really appreciate it. I have been guilty of uh, a couple of late nights at Beyond the Pale. I'll say that. Uh. <laughs> All the good friends of mine. I love those guys. They're uh, and Rob are just amazing dudes. I can't wait to see them. I'm going to be there in about three weeks, and I'm just excited awesome yeah it's great stuff i'll make sure that i check it out again sam corbet you can find them on social media at sawdust city beer and of course go to sawdustcitybeer.com